Okay, so in this tutorial, we're back with our hot diggity dog. And what we're going to do is we're going to start working with manipulating the data a little bit more and also using some functions and formulas. So after giving my spreadsheet some thought, um, I want to make a change here. I want to move my quantity column over so that it's right next to the name of the items. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select my quantity sold. I'm going to right click. I'm going to cut. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to put insert cut cells. And what it does is it's going to go ahead and move my price over and it's going to replace it with the quantity. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a fourth column of information and I'm going to put in sales subtotal. Now you'll notice that um, because the column heading is right next to these other ones, Excel went ahead and automatically formatted it the way the ones to the left are. But we still need to make the column wider, so I'm going to go ahead and widen my column. So now what I want to do in the sales subtotal column is I want to total up how much money each item made. So I'm going to create a formula. And in Excel, in order to put a formula into a cell, we have to tell the cell that this is going to be some type of calculation. To do that, we're going to start off by clicking on the equal symbol. And you'll see now that it comes up in the formula bar also. Now what we want to do for this one is we want to multiply the quantity times the price. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the number that I want and you'll see that what Excel does is it actually puts in the name of the cell that you're going to be multiplying. I'm going to go ahead and put in my multiplication symbol and then I'm going to click the other cell that I want to multiply. Now the reason Excel does this and it's multiplying cells instead of actual numbers is so that if the number changes it's still going to, Excel is still going to figure out the calculation correctly. So if I hit enter now, you'll notice that I have $150 in Chicago style hot dog sales. Now if this number were to change and I put in 55 You'll notice now that my sales subtotal is automatically updated. Because Excel wasn't multiplying 3 times 50, it was actually multiplying whatever quantity happened to be in those cells by each other. Now I want to do the same formula for these other cells. And there's a really cool thing that Excel can do, and it's called the formula, I'm sorry, the pull handle. And if I come down to the right hand corner of the, the cell, and you get this little black plus symbol. I'm going to hold my mouse button down. I'm going to drag down. And it's going to automatically insert the formula. And it's going to make the change to the row appropriately. So now you'll see it's multiplying B5 times C5 and B6 times C6. And that's called the fill handle. Now you could have done a copy or you could have just re-entered another formula. But the fill handle is a much more efficient way um, of working in Excel. And when we're working in Excel, we always want to find the fastest way to do things. So now what we're going to do is we want to add up a total. So under our chili dogs, I'm going to write the word total. And I want to total up the quantity of hot dogs I sold, and I want to add up my sales subtotal. Now one way we could do it, I could do equals, and I could click into the number I want to add and I can do plus and go to my next cell plus and my last cell and hit enter. And this would certainly work. There's nothing incorrect about this but again in Excel we want to do things in the most efficient way. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to delete that. And What we're going to do instead is we're going to go up into the ribbon to something called auto sum and select sum. And what this is going to do, it's going to put in what we call a function. You'll notice right here it says equals sum B4 through B6. So what it's going to do, it's going to add up all the information that's found between cells B4 and B6. And all I have to do is hit enter. You'll notice now that my quantity is updated. Of course, I don't want this um, with accounting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to the number group 
and I'm just going to select general and I do want to center this and I have it like this now and now you'll see if my quantity again gets adjusted and it was 50 you'll see that my total also is updated and I'm going to do the same thing for my sales subtotal I'm just going to do an auto sum and I'm going to hit enter and there we have it now if we want to kind of set this apart I'm going to go ahead and select all the way across and up on the ribbon I'm going to go to cell styles and there's one called total and this will kind of section this off from the rest of my spreadsheet and it will bold it and put in those that single line below the items and that double line below um, the total and the numbers to kind of highlight that that in fact um, is a total so that's a, a simple formula and a function now there are certainly other things that we can do so let's go ahead and do some other calculations here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and to the right of price I want to add something so I'm going to go ahead and click on C and I might have to unmerge my title here but let's try this first I'm going to right click and I want to insert oh good it still worked and I'm going to put in cost now as most of you know that when a hot dog store is selling a hot dog for three dollars um, it certainly it costs them less money to actually make and prepare that hot dog um, and any money left over is what they would call their profit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the Chicago style hot dog costs a dollar fifty to make our Coney Island costs a dollar seventy-five, and oops, and our chili dog costs two dollars. And I'm going to go ahead and I'll give that the proper formatting. Select accounting. So we have our cost and our price. And what I want to do here is I want to find what the profit subtotal was, and the profit is the difference between the price and the cost. So in other words, for each Chicago style hot dog I sell, I'm going to make $1.50. So I'm going to rename this. So I can do that by clicking up into the formula bar. and I'm going to type in the word profit. This will become a subtotal. And I'm going to go ahead and delete my formula because I'm going to give a different formula now and what I'm going to do, I'm going to of course start off with the equal sign and this is going to be a two-step formula so there's two different mathematical operations I'm going to have to do here I first want to find the difference between the price and the cost and then I want to multiply that by the number of that hot dog that I sold so I'm going to click into my price and I'm going to minus the cost of the hot dog and then I'm going to multiply that by the number that I sold. Now if any of you remember um, your order of operations, if I were to leave the formula like this, I'm going to end up with the wrong number because it is actually going to do the um, multiplication before it does the subtraction. So what I have to do is I need to put parentheses around my subtraction and then I can hit enter You'll see now that I made $75 in profit for the Chicago style hot dog for that day. And then I can go ahead and I can drag down this formula and I get an update there. Now one thing I want to show you too while I'm thinking about it is if your cell is not wide enough, um, you're going to notice that you're going to get these number signs that, that come up. If you ever see that, it means there's a number value in there and the column is not wide enough to accommodate that number. Um, this prevents someone from making mistakes seeing that maybe um, they only saw three digits of a five digit number. So this automatically just puts the number sign in or the number symbols in it says hey you need to widen our column. So we can go in head and widen our column. Now there are some other functions that, that we can use um, such as the average um, which I don't know that we would really want to do it here but if we were trying to average these numbers I can up, come up and do an auto sum and I can do an average and this would give me an average uh, profit subtotal for for each 
hot dog and if I hit that then I would have one hundred and five dollars and eighty three cents I'm just gonna go ahead and undo that but that's how you would do an average so there you have um, a little bit of knowledge now of how to do some basic uh, formulas and functions um, in a spreadsheet